Hi, and welcome to this video in the series of how to use PSA gears for fixed income analysis in South Africa. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about FRN valuation, so floating rate notes. And really, there's two types of valuations we want to do. We want to value listed floating rate notes, so FRNs that are listed on the JSE, and also unlisted notes uh, where the characteristics of those bonds are not available through the JSE data. So first of all, uh, this is pretty similar to what we've been doing before. So we want to come in and value a bond, and we can want to get the order price for a given trade date, a bond code, and output parameters. So what we want out. There are some available outputs over here, some of the previous videos. And in the case of FRNs, we also need to know what the trading spread is. Um, so quickly jumping back here. So what I'm getting here is I'm just getting the latest, uh, the last basis point spread for trades on the JSE using the pf.market-to-market -market function. And then what I'm coming in over here, and I want to price a floating rate note, uh, so bond FRN. This should be fairly intuitive. You need the bond code, and that is the FRJ25. I need a trade date, uh, and that is the 29th of April in our example. And if you remember correctly that these brackets mean that the, these are optional parameters, and this can get quite tricky in this function. But uh, for now, I'm just going to run through this, and we're going to talk later when we're pricing uh, unlisted bonds what these actually do. So settlement date, we can leave blank. The trading spread we do actually need, so this is the trading spread over here. And all of the rest of these we can skip, because uh, this is data that uh, the JC does provide two gears. So for listed FRNs, it provides all of the uh, bond characteristics and also the curve dates and curve rates, the rate types, so like benefit benchmarks against the JIWA three month. So those are all provided. Gears knows about them and we don't have to worry about them too much. And then we have to select an output as the last parameter. And that actually, let's make this a bit easier for us. And that will always be in 21. And so I can get the all in. Of course, remember this is per one rand nominal. I actually, I lie. I forgot to divide my trading spread by 10,000. Uh, so per one rand nominal, uh, these are, is going to be my all in price. And I've dragged the formula. So now here we're getting clean. We're getting our coupon dates. Let's just convert this to a date. And then we have our coupon flow here as well. So these are just the uh, next and then the terminal amount. Um, and when, so this is for pricing a listed FRN. When we price an unlisted FRN, we do have to provide gears with some more information on uh, the characteristic characteristics of the bond uh, so that gears can internally kind of calculate the coupon payment dates and all of those other intermediary steps for us. But it's going to look much the same. Uh, and we're just going to reprice the FRJ 2025, but now we need to price it as if gears knew nothing about it. So when we come into the function here, uh, we don't supply a bond code. So let me actually open up the function arguments window. We don't supply a bond code. We do supply a trade date, a settlement date. Uh, again, settlement date isn't strictly necessary because we are providing a trade date. Uh, we're providing a trading spread, and this is reading up from over here. So we're actually providing um, gears with this data, the function with this data. Um, but we are just pulling it from the um, bond data or the MTM file, so the trading spread from there. And the bond data, we're just pulling from the JSC bond data. Um, so we're pretending that this function knows nothing about it because Gears usually looks at the bond code. This bond code is empty. Um, and then we are going to go down and we are going to specify everything as if Gears doesn't know what this bond is. And um, so there we need to fill out all the other uh, parameter, date parameters and all of that. And curve dates we don't have to specify because we uh, it will assume by default it's going to use the swaps curve. And um, then the rate 
curves also the three month dry bar you can also specify your custom curves with your custom rates uh, values well custom rates custom yield curves and um, yeah that's how you price a all-in um, a, a unlisted FRN and it shouldn't be too complicated and that's this video